Uh, so I'm going to give uh, a quick overview of ZK Snark, which is zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive argument of knowledge. So it's used in blockchain and it's used uh, in terms of uh, keeping identity uh, private and also processing private. So I'll give you a few examples and how it actually works. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible and hopefully you'll be able to see the key principles that are actually in, involved. Okay, so in, 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 uh, in ZK Snark, we use what's called homomorphic encryption. So with homomorphic encryption, uh, we can do some basic arithmetic operations. So we can encrypt X plus Y and that allows us to be able to encrypt X and encrypt Y and then we operate on the two encrypted values and we end up with the encrypted uh, value of X plus Y. So the advantage with this is that we don't have to give our data processor the values of X and Y. We can give them the encrypted values. We can then get them to multiply them together and that will give us the, the result, which is X plus Y. So this would allow us to be able to pass values to our data processor and the data processor would do the, the calculations, might be multiplication or addition, uh, and then for them to work on encrypted values, give us the encrypted value back of the result and we could actually uh, find out what the result was. We use it often in ZK Snark to be able to prove that the other side knows something. So if we have Bob and we have Alice, so we have some way to know that Alice knows something that she proves to Bob without actually Alice giving her core values back to, to Bob. So it could be a password or so on. So in this way, Alice can prove herself and can prove something about herself to Bob and continually do it without actually giving away what the secret uh, is. So we use homomorphic encryption uh, for, for this. And the first part that, that we look at is what's called homomorphic hiding. And in this case, we will take X and a Y and then we want that to be encrypted value of X and encrypted value of Y multiplied together will give us this. So what we really want to do is to make sure that uh, Alice knows two values which will calculate to give us a certain value. Okay, and we can do that because we can take discrete logarithms. Uh, we obviously have a mod uh, P here, prime number. But the way that logs work is that that is equal to G to the power of X, X plus Y. That's the way that logs work. So now we can say that if we want to encrypt X plus Y, we take the encrypted value of X and the encrypted value of Y and multiply them together. So in this case, Bob tells Alice, I want you to find two values which equal eight. So Alice knows that she could make x5 and y3. So that, that will prove that she knows two values. So Alice will encrypt five and will encrypt three. So in this case, g, g will take that as two. We can take that as a value of two if we want. Two to the power of five, two to the power of three. Okay, she multiplies those two things together and she'll end up with a, with a result. And the result should be this value. Bob then takes an encrypted value of 8 and compares it 
with the values that she has sent back and if they compare then everything is is okay so this is the, the example that i have uh, here okay so i'm using a g value of three here and there's our x value three and four and we want the answer to be seven in this case and to be able to prove it so Alice takes two values, 3 and 4, takes 3 to the power of 3 and 3 to the power of 4, then sends back the two values, in this case 27 and 81. Uh, Bob can then multiply these together uh, to get, in this case, a value of 66. We take mod p and then uh, Bob Bob uh, takes his answer that he wants from from Alice, does the same thing, and if they're the same, then it's been proven. So if we try it with 8, then we can see the values don't actually work uh, here. Okay, so that's homomorphic uh, hiding, and in this case we can get Alice to prove that she knows something to Bob. So let's say that we don't actually want Alice to know the method that we're using to be able to process uh, some, some values. So let's say that Bob has a secret formula <laughs> which is this. Okay. Uh, let's say that the salary of someone is a thousand and the salary of someone else is, is, is two thousand. And we don't want Alice to know what these two values actually are, but we want her to compute uh, a value uh, for us. So in this case here, uh, then, then we can we end up that this is equal to g to the a x plus b y, and then after that that becomes g to the a x g to the b y uh, from there, and then because of the rules of logs then that becomes the g to the x to the power of a and g to the y to the power of b okay that becomes the encrypted value of x that becomes the encrypted value of y and we raise it to the power of a and we raise it to the power of b so now it's not possible for uh, for Alice to know the values of x and y, but she'll process them for us and she'll give us the answer uh, without her being able to reveal anything. So Bob sends over a and b to the values. So a could be the number of people in the organization who earn 1,000 and B might be the, the, the number of people in the organization who earn $2,000. Okay, we want to create, we want to calculate that value. So we send over A and B, but Alice can't find out that. So uh, we'll send over the encrypted value of X and the encrypted value of y to Alice, the a and the b. So Alice basically takes the encrypted value here and raises it to the power of a, and then takes the encrypted value here and raises it to the power of b. She then multiplies the two together and will send back here and what we'll have is the encrypted value of a x plus b y. 
okay if we want we can decrypt that uh, from from uh, our, our, our encryption from there but we can also prove that Alice actually uh, in this case Alice could know these two values uh, and be able to calculate that so in this case we have allowed Alice to process something without actually knowing the method uh, involved in the in the computation or the the values in, involved in it okay so here's uh, our example here okay so then in this case uh, there is our our values so in this case we're using ax plus bx squared as our is our function that we want uh, Alice to to compute and we could pass her the values of a and b and from there uh, so Bob will calculate e1 and e2 and then send that to Alice Alice will then uh, m uh, multiply the two values together and she'll be able to uh, work out the the answer okay and there's an answer in there so we're taking three and four and seven and she's computed it and we'll try it with eight okay so we can see here uh, the answer that we get for that equation and, there. and here's the answers for the encrypted volume okay so that has shown you hopefully some of the basics of uh, ZK snarks how we can uh, prove that Alice knows something and how we can get Alice to perform a calculation for us without her actually knowing what the calculation actually is.